is that? It's it's red again. So well, what I was we're talking. Hi everybody. Uh, this is Growing Up Chestnut with Mike and Becky. And Be are you shy today? I am so so no. No. Well, your feet. You. I wish people could see her feet are dangling. <laughs> and she's kicking because I'm them. short. Like, well, yeah. so am I. Yeah, Although but... next year I look tall, <laughs> so I like that. It makes me feel good. Yeah. So, uh, do you remember the first time? Remember when we took Grandma and Grandpa on vacation? Mm -hmm. But we might have to go inside if we get these wasps but even more closer. I, dude, to... we got wasps. Are you scared of them? Yeah, hey, I've If they sting us, it adds like... more thing to it. It'd be like three D effect. Oh but anyways, do you remember when we took Grandma and Grandpa on vacation with us? Yes. Oh my goodness, yes. Where did we go? I forget. We went to Florida. Was it? Yeah. We oh yeah, we went to. And we had we went. Did to, we go to Disney World? No. No. We, we went and um, we did fishing. We just kind of did we go to Disney World? I can't remember. I don't think so. But we went. I remember. So Grandma and Grandpa had never been in a hotel before. No. And when we got to the hotel, we all went into the. To the first room we had we had were we all sharing one room no we had two adjoining rooms and we got in there and grandma threw grandpa on the bed yes. remember that and goes <laughs> leander like that and grandma's excited about being in the and mom's like really and she grabs those kids and gets us out of there you know but you no know, the kicker was it was one of those vibrating beds where you put quarters oh in, yeah and then um it wouldn't stop oh really yeah, that happened to Dad, too. One time, when us kids put quarters, but it wouldn't stop, and he was trying to figure out how to unplug But, yeah, they put quarters in the bed, and Grandma's like, well, we can't get it to stop. Just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Just keeps going. It was cute. They were cute. Grand Grandma and Grandpa were always so much fun. But I remember that vacation trip the most because you were a teenage girl, and Becky would always – Becky was so stinking skinny back then. And <laughs> – well, that, and I thought I was okay. Well, we were we <laughs> Becky is so stinking skinny, okay. And <laughs> oh my god, yeah, right. Uh, so, when we were chestnut jeans, so when we were teenagers, she would go and she was, she you weighed probably what 80 pounds, maybe. Probably. And Becky was like, I'm, I'm just fat. And grandma would play into it and go, Honey, you're not fat. And Becky was just feeling starting to feel good about herself. And finally, grandma said one day, she went. Honey, you're not fat. You're just too short for your weight. <laughs> I remember. And that was the last time Becky said anything about her weight. You don't say anything in front of Grandma. She's no. Not, she's not very complimentary. No. she. I liked her cackle, though. Yeah. She always sounds like a witch. I have her cackle. She, has, she sounds like a witch. Yes. She always, I used to think, I remember my friends when they would hear her, like, oh, my goodness. Like, yes. <laughs> she had a push. She had a wicked wit, uh, wicked laugh. I mean, she did. I used to always love to bring loud, my friends loud, over, though. Witchy. witchy. Yes. But they were outside of the home, they were very bashful and shy. But inside their home, they were because you could bring a stranger. I would bring friends over and they loved them and they would entertain them, you know. And yeah. and grandma, I remember when I worked at Hoosier Hills Baptist Camp um, on the weekends, once in a while, we, we would go. I would go stay with grandma and grandpa and a bunch of counselors would want to go with us because one grandma would do all our laundry and she would cook she <laughs> and grandma could cook. Grandma could cook. Grandma could cook. Absolutely. And she would do. But I would love it because the stories she would tell and the things she would do. So one year, me and the twins, we, they lived in Virginia and they had this apple orchard in the back. It was really neat. And, um, we would, Grandpa, not every day, but almost every day, would give us like a dollar. And, you know, back then a dollar was like five dollars. A couple of candy And he'd give us each a dollar, and we would go down to the candy store down the street. It was like a, a local Piggly Wiggly or something like that there. And we would go down, we would walk, and it, it was maybe a mile, um, but we'd walk down there, and we would go buy us candy and bring it back. And I remember one day, this old man started chasing us, <laughs> and he was drunk or something. I don't yeah. know what. But, you know, we're so I'm Probably. thinking this is we're in elementary school, so we're pretty young, okay? So, and um, this man starts chasing me, Danny and David, and we like we run it out, huh? to the to their house. We get in there, 
And we're like, Grandpa, Grandpa, this guy was chasing us, trying to get our money and all this stuff. And Grandma goes, oh, they're lying. She's like, yeah, they're yeah. just, she said, they're making this stuff up. You, They just want some attention. Made me and the twins mad. So Danny and David, Chestnut, are twin brothers. Are, they're our cousins. They're twins. Uncle identical twins. And I remember we got so mad because Grandma, she started scolding us for lying and all this stuff. And it was two days later, Grandma, Grandpa took us fishing, took me into the twins fishing. We went fishing. We came back and there was a note on the door that she, she was run down to the, the beauty store and she'd be right back. She'd go and get her hair did. And, uh, <laughs> And so, she talked. That's what she did. and so she came, she came home and she come running in like me and the twins uh -huh. did. She went, Lee, Lee. She goes, that man chased me. He wanted money and he's going on. And grandpa goes, oh, shucks, boys. What? You think she's just wanting attention? <laughs> she got so mad. And he didn't care. Storm not, no, he oh, laughed no, he, so hard. But we, did. me and the twins, we felt vindicated, <laughs> yes. you know, because we're like, but oh, and, I know how she does. And I would, I would, all the way up until I went to Market Manor, I, I used to go every year, I'd go and spend the summer with them and stuff like that. And I remember one time, uh, I, you hated when grandma told you to go get a switch because she would use that switch. I never had her tell me that. Oh, she did. Well, the boys yeah. got it. <laughs> But anyways, we'd go, we'd have to go get that switch. And I remember one time I, I didn't get it. And she said, you're not going to go get that switch. I said, no, Granny Grunt, I'm not going. And I called her Granny no, Grunt. No, you don't call her Granny Grunt. She got so mad, but oh. Grandpa busted out really? laughing. Wow. And it was so funny. He had to hold her back because if she would have got a switch, she'd have killed me. <laughs> and I remember I was just little, call, and I had to sit in the corner for like, Felt like it days, you know. I was probably, probably in there for five minutes. yeah, probably five <laughs> minutes. But after that, then she never let me forget that I called her Granny I Grunt. I remember her talking about that. I didn't know that's what happened. Mm -hmm. That's hilarious. Yep. And you're brave. I didn't ever want to get on the worst side of Grandma. Well, do you remember where they lived? Yeah. They lived across from that graveyard. That graveyard. Yeah. And yeah. Grandpa used to do this thing. He'd walk out. He'd go. So at night. He'd come home late because he worked the second shift. Did come he? Home at midnight, I think is what it was. And he would. I heard there was time, one time he told us kids, hey, goodnight. make sure you say goodnight to that guy underneath your bed. And we all like ran and jumped from the door to that's the how, bed and got on it. That's where I got that. That's how I always, I mean, he used to say it to me. And my dad always laughed at me because I could, I could jump from, I turned my light out and jump from my, from the <laughs> doorway to my bed. But I loved it. He had a saying, he'd walk down the hall and he would go, raw headed and bloody bone. Raw-headed and, and he bloody bones. He had a deep, scary and he had voice. A, I don't know what he had a saying. He said, "But that's all I remember to it." Do that's you remember all, what the rest was? He said. No, no he said there was a phrase he would say. I don't remember. It was about someone from the graveyard or something, and it would scare me to Scares. death. And he quit doing that after a while because I would end up sleeping with them well, all do you night. Remember? And oh, Grandma did not like me sleeping with them. I think it was Chris. Cousin Chris and um, Earl and Jonathan and Greg and I, and probably you. I don't remember if the twins were, it was some of the cousins had stayed all night and we watched them. Um, um, what in the world is that show where they're like the first time? Oh, um, Night, of the Living Dead. Night of the Living Dead. Were you there when we watched Night of the Living Dead? I was too young when that came out. And um, it was on TV and they lived, I mean, it's a lane. A lane between their house and a graveyard. Oh yeah, and um, they that night it was windy. I don't remember if it was raining, but it was real windy because that was a freaky show. That was scary. And I, I won't to this day watch all these like these Walking Dead people that they do the Walking Dead. The Walking Dead. Yeah, because it reminds me of that. But anyway, um, we kept hearing knocking, and while we were watching the on the show, we kept hearing knocking. It was on the back of the house. Grandpa wasn't home yet. Grandma was home. And she kept saying, oh, it's nothing, it's nothing, it's no big deal. But I could tell shit was making her nervous. And we could, she's looking out the windows, and we were all like, just couldn't. I mean, I was scared to death. And finally, and I don't think we were allowed to watch the rest of it. We might have watched the rest, but I don't remember. But I remember I was, uh, 
the boys got in the back bedroom bed and me and grandma got it. She went, she got in bed with me because I was not, because I would have been with her and grandpa. So then grandpa comes home. Yeah. He doesn't know we watched that show. And what was it? Sammy Terry? What was it? Sammy Creature Terry, Feature? Yeah, Creature, Creature Features, Feature. I think, or something like that. I don't remember what Indiana's was. I think Sammy Illinois. Sammy Terry. And uh, so anyway, <laughs> um, grandpa does that raw-headed blade bone thing. And she had just got us all calm. And she was just calm, but she was scared too. And we could still hear Those that thing. It was by, it was by the, our, my bedroom window. It was in between the two bedroom windows, the, the bedrooms that the boys were sleeping in that me and grandma were sleeping in. And it was just banging. And it was not consistent. Like it was just different times. And so anyway, grandpa comes home, does his raw head and bloody bones. Yeah. Well, need to say he slept by himself because I'm not letting grandma out of that bed. It's not going to, it's not happening. And I don't, I think I slept most of the night. And finally, next morning, we get up and we make we do an investigation, and it was a rake that was leaning up against the house. Now I don't know how it did not fall, because it was windy, but it, that rake stayed steady all night, scaring us kids to death. It was That's like, funny. Yeah, it was. What? Uh, you were hearing that on the wall at your house. Bill, not tomorrow, got married. Oh, I mean, Bill go oh, yeah. So, Bill and I not married very long, and Brooke was, she, was Aiden born yet? Yeah, was me, yeah. Brooke, and Aiden were the baby. Yeah, his baby, baby, and, and then and then Ashley, Bill's daughter, and Ashley was in her room, and the girls were in Jamie's room, sleeping. And me and Bill, well, they weren't sleeping; they were all just in the room. I don't know if Bill and I, we were go to bed, and we were just standing in the room talking about something. Our door was open, all this stuff. And all of a sudden, all three girls, not even talking to each other, but in separate bedrooms, just come flying out. And they're like, and they're all talking at the same time. And then they're looking at each other. You heard too? You heard too? And they heard something knocking on the window. Evidently, it was Ashley's like window. Scratching like out. scratching noise. So <laughs> anyway, Bill told me when we got married, he goes, I'm not going to lie to you, but I'm the biggest scaredy cat there is. And he told me that. <laughs> but he wasn't lying. So um, anyway. He's going, we're all behind him. He's, I mean, we're down the hallway, and it was like, it's like one of those, yeah, movies, where like you're creeping. One of those cartoons when you're creeping down yes, the hallway it's to get all hilarious. <laughs> so we get, we get there, and he opens, um, because we had a side door that right. goes under where a carport, we have a carport, and he opens the door, and Brooke shoves him out the door and shuts the door. And we're all like, what? And he, <laughs> he out there. yes, and he, he was, he didn't know who pushed, pushed him or anything, but he was like, and I'm like, it's Brooke. And I kind of let him in. She goes, no, you got to find out what's on. I go, what if somebody has a gun? We don't know what this person is. It's like, <laughs> but yeah, that was, that's it the was girl's. It was a, oh, it was a rake. It was a rake. That's We right. have painted rakes in our. Painted rakes. Painted rakes. That reminds me of dad. What's that? Okay. I took him to the neurologist yesterday. Okay. This is a story. Because he hear. had something wrong with his artery. They thought he, thought he had a aneurysm. Thank God. Now they're thinking that not. We don't know what's going on with the attic. No, we've never known. <laughs> he likes to keep us guessing. Dad. But anyway, so the doctors explained to him about the arteries and like, and he said, you know, that's how you were made. And he's just talking. And Dad's going, can I interrupt you? You know, Dad's Dad's been over to because Dad's now he he can't right. sit up straight. He bends over, and he looks up like this. And he said, yes, Mr. Chestnut, what is? It? And he said, well, I don't know how to tell you this, but I get poked. And he said, and the doctor's going, and he said, and his hip. Hang on, I gotta make sure our mic's still working. Is it still working, Jamie? Do you see red mark? Yeah, okay, it's working. Sorry, somebody tried to call in on my mic. So anyway, um, so he's telling the doctor where he gets poked and the doctor, he goes, I don't know what that could be. And the doctor said, well, it's probably neurological. So right. He goes, I don't know, I'd have to do tests and talk to you more what's going on with you. And in the middle of all that, all I could think of was, and I just looked at Dad and I go, it's a haint. And Dad looked at me. He goes, what? I said, it's a haint. It's a haint. So me and Dad start laughing. The doctor, he's looking at us. I go, that's what we call ghost in our family. My grandma, my grandma and he started laughing because he had a grandmother right. at, that had Alzheimer's and stuff. So he had some good stories too. But anyway, yeah, I thought that reminded me because the ghost and the dad saying he's been poked. But he's told me three or four times he's been poked. Well. So I don't. You've been it, poked. You know you've been poked. Could be a mama. So 
we're, somehow we got back on hainted stories this week again. Yeah. So there was one story you did not tell oh, yeah. last week. And what was that story? Well, I don't remember how old I was. I want to say. I think you were in high school. I think so. But this, these kids came on the bus. Three kids came on the bus. They were teenagers. And the youngest one, I don't think she was a teenager. When you say bus, to our bus van, route for church. Our van, yeah. And um, to our church, yeah. And anyway, in the process, I know that the, I think two of them got saved, maybe three of them. I don't remember. But I do remember, yeah, they did. Because they did baptize the two oldest ones. But the youngest one was not old enough to be baptized. So they wanted to make sure that it was okay with her. I don't mean by old, old enough to be baptized, but they still needed the, they still needed the mom and dad's permission for her to get baptized. Right. So anyway, I guess the little girl went home that day and she was telling her mom and dad she wanted to get baptized. So from there, dad gets a phone call from the mom and says, we need help because our daughter said she got saved and she wants to be baptized. And I know the other two got baptized. Dad said, yeah, I think this is how the story goes. But anyway, and she said, but we have a ghost that lives with us and he's mad. Ever since we talked about it, he's mad hmm. and he's pitching a fit and he's rattling pots and pans. She told dad that we've never actually seen him, but we hear him, not verbally. But she says he's always, since they've been there, he's always made noise and stuff. But he doesn't bother them. And so anyway, dad's like, so they're asking for help. So dad's like, okay, this is a job for Raymond St. John. <laughs> well, Raymond St. John, they were missionaries to Africa. to Africa. So they had dealt with demonology yes, and stuff before. Exactly. And I, I don't know if this was dad's first time ever dealing with no, something like that. He's Well, he's actually, first time they actually dealt, he was in charge of dealing with it. But he's been around where it's happened before, and he's known there were some right. But long, short story. Um, so they go over there, and Dad said, he's sitting here, and the kitchen door is, the kitchen entrance way, I don't know if it's a door, but it's an entrance way there, and Raymond is sitting across from him at, at this big window, and so they started talking about, you know, the lady said, well, he's not here. The kids said, he's not here right now. And Dad's like, okay, you know. So anyway... Raymond and Dad start talking about the Bible, witnessing to the parents and, and talking about right. the, the little girl. And then all of a sudden, and Dad said, they didn't even have to say nothing. He said, it literally, it literally did like the show say, it, it, it got cold. Mm. He said, you can feel pressure. And at one point, Dad heard before, he heard a zzz by his ear. And he thought he heard something in the kitchen, but he wasn't sure. So then he hears a zzz again, and then the little girl goes, not the little girl, the, I think it was the oldest girl, or it was one of the older children said so he's here and uh so anyway he didn't speak to them or anything but they started uh talking and he said the demon told him that they are not welcome and they need to leave mm. and then raymond starts quoting scripture and he's no you need to leave and then they him and dad between him and dad were quoting scriptures and um talking about the blood of course and um i'm not sure at all but they actually was speaking to him and uh he was getting mad and he literally just literally went in the kitchen. You could hear. And so I didn't see anything. I didn't see him throwing anything, but it sounded like, like he would, you could hear pots and pans rattling. You could hear all kinds of things. And, um, I heard dad said they found, they cleaned out the house. There was a Ouija board there. They went into the daughter's room. There was a bunch of like, uh, demonic, demonistic posters, kind of like with rock bands and stuff, but they found tarot cards. They found Ouija board. So a lot of things that, you know, welcome those in, right? So and that that Raymond told them, you've had to have something in this house that's allowed. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. and they did name? name him, and his name was Jack. So they called him by his name, which is not a good thing to do. Call no, amen. And um, so anyway, um, they got all that, and they I want to say they burned it. I'm sure. But, um, I was asking Dad about it just the other day, and I think Dad said they burned them. And I can't remember what exactly was said at the end, but basically when they, they said, you know, as for me and my house was for the Lord, and you're not welcome here because these kids are now covered under the blood, and they're, uh, two of them were baptized, and they were walking in the, you know, in right. um, the steps of Jesus to follow Christ. And 
they said you're no longer welcome here and that said it just went like the it's not like it didn't get like warm but the coldness went away it was like a dis different atmosphere and they knew and the little girl goes he's gone and they knew so dad saw the mom about i guess about three months later four months later. it wasn't very long and she said he's not been back wow so you know it's just one of the that's serious that, well you know i remember I so i remember as a kid when dad told that so i can tell you in my life one thing i like about dad is dad dad is a dad has always been a, a protector right and so i've never seen dad afraid you know if something's going he goes towards it he, he would protect us all that stuff but that night i remember he didn't i don't know he told us that night he may have told you guys i remember when he had the conversation with me about it the the seriousness in him and the fear of he did not want to do what it. he dealt with and how real it was you know so I, I remember that because, you know, well, I remember, dad was never an emotional person. No. Never has been. I don't know why we're talking about this, but I, anyway, I remember you, you're full of when Jamie was nine months old and their dad, um, you know, he hadn't been saved very long. Um, well, a couple of years, you know, but he had some friends from high school that found that he was a preacher, you know, going to school to be a preacher. So, and they were um, of another denomination, but they were all excited. There was, uh, four of them and we all you know all got saved they're all excited and so we all met and i'm trying to think what it was because it was down at boulder hill you know that little yeah. that little restaurant and we met there and we all were having a conversation and, mm -hmm. and at one point the one girl wanted to argue with with chris about this stuff this um like speaking in tongues oh. okay so short story long um one of the other other couples said hey let's just let why don't we just pray because we all we're, we're all saved and we wanted to blah 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 and so we all held hands and we started praying well when we started praying the one girl that was upset she started speaking in tongues but when i say tongue she was saying the same word over and over again okay okay never thought anything of it and Jamie, all of a sudden, was she's like nine months, and she starts screaming and hollering and stiffening. And I'm like, what in the world? So I took her outside, and she calmed down. But when that couple went, when they everybody was leaving, I was outside, and she was like, and she was just terrified. So through her life, up until she was about three or four, we would have episodes of clowns. I would go in her room, and she's screaming, and it went under there. It's and the, her biggest thing was it's on her, it's squeezing her legs. Mm. Um, and I remember one of the Ferguson boys was going to college in Oklahoma. We had moved to Oklahoma. And he, it was his birthday. So we were celebrating his birthday and uh, just letting him get out of, the, out of the dorm and right. stuff. And we started talking about something. But anyway, she pulls this episode. She literally hops out of her. She had a little seat that's like a booster seat and, and landed in my lap and started, there he is, there he is. We're all like. And I don't know how many times she would do that. And I'm like, something's wrong with her. And I, we were like, did somebody molest her? Right. What happened? We'd ask her, somebody being mean to you? We'd ask her, and because, you know, she was the church baby. We lived in Oklahoma by then, right. by that time. And she was a church baby, and then she'd go everywhere. So long story short, we ended up moving back to Illinois and being able to get to be with mom and dad. By that time, Wesley was a little over a year. And um, so she would stay with Frank and Shirley or mom and dad. All the time mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah all the time she's such a brat but anyway so one night dad says to me hey so Wednesday night he goes hey after church I want to take you and Chris out just you no I don't want anybody else and he was real serious you know dad's not you're right our dad's not a serious person and uh unless unless he asks is, yeah and so I'm like so I said something to him and he said oh, no we'll talk about it later I'm like so I tell the him, and he's like, okay. So she goes home with Grandma Carrie. We get, we go to Wendy's. Come on, Dad, you could have done better than that. But we went to Wendy's, and we're sitting there, and he goes, do you know that Jamie's scared of clowns? Because I'll tell you one time we were at Oklahoma Baptist College, and one of the kids, we were at a basketball game, and one of the guys came up and had a balloon, and he was a clown, and she literally climbed up the, literally climbed up the wall. My, I was, like, holding her. She was up to high, and I was holding her, trying to, what is going on with her? And this guy goes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm like, well, it's not you. It's not you. It's always clowns. 
<laughs> so anyway, um, she, um, dad said that she stayed all night with them and she ended up in bed with them and scared of clowns. And he said, this is not the first time she's ever done that. And I said, no. And I, I said, no, she has. And I started telling him issues. Right. He said, have you ever been around a demon? So I'm sure we probably have. I don't you know. And he goes, start naming things that, you know, that, that what happens when you're talking, are you talking about something? Are you doing something? And I don't know why it came to me. And I remember talking, thinking about, I don't know if it was the dad or me that thought about it, but whenever we would tell the story about the getting together, because we would tell about it. We'd, cause right. the, we'd say, she would say this thing over and over again. Well, we were saying the word that she said. Mm -hmm. And to this day, I wish I could get out of my mind, but I can't. And so we were talking about what she said. Blah, 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 blah. And dad goes, was she, maybe she was calling out a demon and she didn't know she was calling out a demon. I said, what? He said, yeah, because, you know, repetition and you call mm -hmm. out a demon. Because he said, like, some people tooth and tongue, they do all kinds of, but when you, right. this one's over and over again. And I said, yeah, and I go, but now that I think about it, it is when we, when we talk about that. Wow. So we go to the church. Now, do you remember those books that dad had? They were green. They were real big and thick. Mm -hmm. And they had a skull and bones on them. He, yeah. he painted them on there. Oh, he did? Yeah. You didn't know that? No. Yeah, he painted them on there and he put poison. Remember, they, were, they had the word poison underneath okay. it. I never knew what they were. My, I just knew dad said, so don't ever open those. Well, I found out that night what they were. There were books, he said, um, of demons, names of demons. So we looked up, yeah. And so we looked up the name that we looked up the word, her and her dad, him and his and their dad looked up the word. And it was a demon. And it's a demon that comes in the form, it appears to children. And it mostly does, oh, wow. mostly does clowns. I'm just being a serious, oh, wow. like, mostly clowns or blah, blah, blah. Uh, like things like that. And I was like, so the dad comes out and he goes, oh my goodness. We've been calling, every time we tell the story, we're calling up this demon. We're calling him. We're inviting him in. Mm. So dad told us what to do. <laughs> I'm like, uh-uh, I'm not going home with this thing. Uh-uh. So we live in a little apartment. And um, so we gave Wes Wesley and Jamie shared the same room. But that night they slept on one end and one on the other. Because Wesley was he was probably two by then. She was at least four. I know she wasn't going to school yet. So we gave him Bibles, a little New Testament. We opened the Bible on the blood. Mm -hmm. And then, and then um, we, all through the house, because we always had enough Bibles, we could do that. But we, all through the house, we opened them, you know. And so I remember we knelt on our beds, uh, knelt on the floor by the kids, and we prayed and called him out by his name. Told him he wasn't welcome. I'm going, you know, it's like first. And uh, I'm waiting for the doors to slam, you know, things pitch a bit. And um, told him, for, our, for us, me and my house, we're, um, you know, I'm covered under the blood, blah, blah, blah. And um, uh, Wesley, before we were done, he was out sleeping. And because Jamie would have to sleep with us almost every night, this would occur almost every night. And so that night, we are laying in bed, I'm like, so we prayed together that God would just give us peace and help us sleep. I don't remember anything else after that. I woke up like, and to this day, nothing, mm. nothing ever has happened until she was like 21. She hated clowns. She didn't know why she hated clowns. And when she was 21, she was talking to somebody and she was like, I hate clowns. I don't know why I hate clowns. I said, I'll tell you why you hate clowns. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, and I don't like to tell the story very often, but. But you know, people don't get that when you're in a pastor's home. You're under attack. You're, you're under attack. Spiritually, and, yeah. And Not then, just pastors, but. I mean, look how many evangelist families, missionary families we know. Um, and we all have similar stories because you're under attack, but we also, because our fathers are fighting spiritual battles, um, they're involved in things that normal people would not be involved in. And we've, we've been privy to see things that others not right. seen because they thank god haven't had to experience that because some people that would 
you know, when people come to the church and get saved, they bring everything with them. Right. And when they get saved, then, you know. And a lot of times we're just naive and we don't know. Yes. We don't know that we invite it. We don't sometimes. I didn't even know you. I didn't even realize you have to invite them in. Why would I invite them in? I mean, you know, you don't right. understand. But it's some people. And, but also now that I've worked a few other jobs and um, done some type of social type work jobs, I've met people who they did, they do this for fun. Or there's some families who, I mean, I've talked to, when I worked at the prison, I've talked to several men who were raised with a ghost in their house mm -hmm. that they had named right, and all this stuff. And you're just like, and I would sit there and listen to their stories and I'm like, wow, that was a demon. Yeah. And I just, what was normal to one, someone else. And so, you know. It was the day and age we live in too. It was. It tells, tells us about, but I mean, there is always that curiosity for most of us. A lot of people have that. And they Curiosity want, of the, like ghosts and, you know, things. Yep. And. It is. It is. It is. But. Well, we got to be done with haints now. Yes. So next episode. So what I'd like to do is ask. So we've talked to several people who has stories. So if you're a cousin of ours, an aunt of ours, an uncle of ours, you went to Valley Baptist Church or another church with us, and you got a story, we want to pipe you into this and share them, especially the funny ones. You know, there are, because they're, that's the one thing with our family. Our family always, everything was a, humor. Every, we dealt with anything good or bad was with humor. It was. And, but humor felt. helps you deal with things so sometimes funny. in life as well. And sometimes it, it can be too much too, you yeah, know? Yeah. Oh, well, we've done so, that over. But anyway, so we're going to do that. We're going to, so I want you to, we're, I want to talk about some of the potluck dinners we had, some of the ladies who cooked, some of the meals we've had we served dare, to us. So, yes. Oh my gosh. Well, we got to go look and see if they're still alive. Yeah. Uh, before we, we tell the tell story. <laughs> <laughs> we can only tell certain stories. Yes, because <laughs> man. But, but we had a lot of good cooks. Not, don't get me wrong. We did have a lot we of had good cooks. Wonderful ladies and. I and miss so, you know I miss my Valley Baptist. So we'll do that in a couple of weeks. And, and we'll, you know what we need to do is have Jamie make us um, Italian beef, and we can eat the Italian beef with oh, everybody be awesome. telling the story. Yeah. yeah, that sounds like a plan. She makes Italian beef just like Mom does. So, all right. Well, thank you all. We'll catch you next time.